I got a comment recently from Vilius Rybinskas asking me to do a video on the 5x5 final at Worlds 2011, since it was somewhat intense. I thought this was a good idea, so I started researching, but as I went down the rabbit hole, I noticed that there are interesting things about every world championship. So, this is the start of a new series where we talk about each world championship and see what they were like. I've already covered a fair amount of Worlds 1982 in my video on Min Tai, so we're going to start with Worlds 2003, which, if it weren't for the efforts of Cubers such as Tyson Mao and Ron Van Brukem, may have been the last competition for a very long while. The Cuban craze was starting to pick up again in the late 1990s, thanks to the Rubik's Games program. People like Ron Van Brukem, Chris Hardwick, Dan Harris, and many others connected over their shared interest. They were all sharing their times and improvements, but they all wanted to be able to compete in a real official competition. Many of them were too young to remember the original craze, and never had the chance at the time. So they decided they would try to set up their own World Championship, the first in nearly 20 years. Initially, the competition was set for the beginning of 2002 in New York City. Ron Van Brukem had a contact at a robot competition, and it was set to take place at Columbia University. Everything was going very well, and it looked like the first World Championship since 1982 would finally take place. Unfortunately, 9-11 put a stop to that, as Columbia University changed focus as a result. This meant they had to start over. The next idea was to hold the competition in June 2002, exactly 20 years after 1982. Initial plans were promising. It would be held in London, alongside the annual Mind Sports Olympiad. However, it fell through when the organisers of the Olympiad expected that the World Championship organisers would have their own source of funding. The dream of a new World Championship was slipping from their fingers. It seems like it would never happen. And then Dan Gosby came along. Dan Gosby is a Canadian software engineer, now retired, who was very intent on a new world championship happening. An initial meeting took place at Dutch Cube Day 2002 with Jessica Friedrich, Mira Golgen, Lars Vandenberg, and Ron Van Brukem. Within just a few months, he had managed to meet with seven towns and get them to sponsor the competition, secure $50,000 in funding, and get a venue locked down in Toronto. The media had become interested, and everyone was excited for August the 23rd, 2003. The Ontario Science Centre was going to be packed with nearly 100 cubers from over a dozen countries. Everything looked perfect. The first day, however, had a few issues. Although everyone tried their best, it quickly became very clear that the vast majority of the staff were fairly unqualified and the regulations were not good enough. At the start, there was only one scrambler to deal with all 88 competitors, which slowed a lot of things down. Although there were some basic regulations, the interpretations were varied between judges and organisers. Quickly, the competition ran quite behind, leading to some shortcuts taken. David Wesley managed to break the single world record on 5x5 in the qualification round with a 2.19.69 single solve, far faster than anyone had ever done before. It later emerged that, due to being so far behind schedule, Dan Gosby was forced to send out misscrambled cubes just to try and catch up, and the resulting misscramble had fairly easy centres. Although everyone believed he was fully deserving of the record, it upset a few people that the scramble was easy. At the end of the day, 3x3 round 1 was scheduled. It began, however, by that point the competition had gone so far behind that they had to move the second half of the first round to the second day. Ron Van Brueghem in particular criticised this, as the scrambles were out, and people could discuss them before the rest of the cubists had competed. The competing area only had four speed stacks times on the first day, which was not enough to keep things running smoothly. Probably the biggest issue on the first day, though, was Raphael Algarin. On his profile, Raphael is listed as only having competed in 3x3 at the competition. However, he had actually competed in other events, such as 5x5. The problem was that he didn't actually know how to solve 5x5, and the proto-regulations didn't actually say that you had to know how to solve the puzzle that you were competing in. As a result, he kept going, and going, and going, 
and eventually the timer shut off. Ron then came over and told him he needed to stop in order to let others compete, but Raphael refused as, technically, he was allowed to keep going forever. Eventually they managed to stop him, but it was a significant headache for the organisation team. Thankfully, the second day was much better organised. After the hiccups of day one, Dan Gosby and the other organisers were determined to make the second day great. The second half of 3x3 and the odd events took place, and many world records were set, beating the now unofficial world records from before. Eventually, the 3x3 finals took place, and all the world's press crowded around the stage to watch the finalists. Ron Van Broekum, Gene Means, David Allen, Jess Bond, Lars Vandenberg, David Wesley, Jessica Friedrich, and Dan Knights. Intriguingly, the 4x4 and 5x5 finals came after the 3x3 finals. There was serious competition, but Masayuki Akimoto came out on top for both. Finally, the three medalists of the 3x3 event and the winner of the second world championship was announced. With an average time of 20.2 seconds, the world champion is Dan Knight. Although this competition had a lot of flaws, Worlds 2003 was a milestone competition and is generally regarded very fondly by most who were there. However, Dan Gosby took what criticism there was personally. He left the cubing world and generally disappeared from the scene. He did reappear at Worlds 2013, but only on the second day and just to watch. It's unlikely that he'll come back anytime soon. I should mention at this point that due to his disappearance from the community, I was unable to find a contact for him, and so I was unable to get his side of the story. If you're watching this, Dan, sorry if I made it sound like you're the villain in this scenario. Call me. The fallout that ensued, however, made it seem unlikely that there would be another world championship anytime soon. With the main organiser gone, who would step up to the plate? The WCA didn't exist at this point, so no one knew if anyone else would be able to bring competitors from around the world together again. Indeed, it seemed very unlikely at this point, and many Cubers resigned themselves to never seeing another competition again.